Hi, and welcome back to the next episode of Speak, where I, Crystal Danbury and Elisa Lynch are joined by the amazing Ellie Thomas, a very good friend of mine, a new acquaintance of Elisa, um, Mm -hmm. and she has posed a fantastic question to us. But before we dive into the question, I'll just let Ellie introduce herself. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, I'm very bad at introductions, so I will keep it very brief. But my name is Ali Thomas. Um, I lead an agency, a medical communications agency that works with pharmaceutical companies on their um, marketing campaigns, essentially. So nothing to do with safety. um, But yeah, I think got a lot to add to this subject of conversation. So look forward to discussing it. Amazing. So why don't you share with the audience? What, so we obviously put a link a post out on LinkedIn to say, what do you think we should be talking about? And like, why don't you just take the audience through what the question was and why it was on your mind? Oh, yeah, well, this is a massive topic. And as soon as I posted it, I half regretted it. because I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, this could take easily like five podcasts to, to go over. Um, there's just so many roads you could go down with it but sort of divided it into I think there's two parts of the question to me um so we're talking about looks I guess that's that's the general subject of today um and the first kind of part of the question is how does the way that you look impact on your own perception of yourself and how you act so um for example, if you if you think you look physically good one day, does that impact your own confidence or other part of the way that you act? And if so, why? Um, and then the second part is external. It's how does the way you look impact on how others perceive you? Because um, we were just talking before, but I mean, everyone likes to think they're they're not physically judgmental at all. But I think we are kind of making those judgments subconsciously whether we like it or not so oh yeah and like looks can mean anything there's so much to that there's like bodies like size weight um like attractiveness in speech marks yeah Yeah. exactly um age like other kind of physical attributes as well so it's just a huge topic but yeah I, I just think it's it's interesting and I feel like I mean, I I feel like I spend so much cost wise on things that relate to physical appearance. And it's just like, why? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I totally get that. I think the really interesting thing is we I think we've known each other now for eight years, nine years, something like that um yeah longer than that I think yeah probably yeah um and you have always been um just the one in the group that just it's the the hair it's immaculate like you say you spend an awful lot of money on those sort of things that to do with how you look and you're amazing at it by the way and (laughs) I am I am quite naturally a not like a non even me with my rosy face because my heating is on his room and the door is closed I don't wear makeup I will not dye my hair I love my gray but it is really interesting the first which is weird you say that because I mean you always look great to me but then you're not doing those things like so that that's kind of interesting in itself that you're obviously like you know you say yourself you're not that that bothered about that kind of like extra spend on on those kind of things but um yeah I think it's part of that um the impact how does it impact the way that you see yourself I think I think it digs straight into there and Elisa I mean throw in the what yeah how how do you feel about that sort of stuff the hair the makeup the clothes like what's the what, what's your natural sort of lean um my natural lean now would be leaning away from it I suppose ever since I hit my 30s I would say I started to give less of a fuck and oh my god is it freeing I would not go back to <laughs> my 20s for all the money in the world um because I literally I kind of had this aha moment of why am I who who am I doing this for and why am I doing it yeah. um mm, that's it it's what what who are you doing it for and that's what I can't work out sometimes is it for myself or 
for others I just don't know it's yeah and I don't think it will ever be a clear-cut answer because we are so influenced by society's expectation as women what you're to look like what you're to wear how well you're to be turned out you must be groomed all this stuff Mm. and it's expected now like absolute fucking lol at like the guys go oh I love a woman with like who's just natural not too much makeup and I'm like she's absolutely covered in foundation you don't even know what natural looks like anymore yeah, because that, makeup that is has become so good makeup let me open my door hold on but like makeup has become so good that you can't tell yeah sometimes oh you're just so wearing. used to seeing people in makeup that yeah and um like it took as soon me... as soon as like if I if I go into work without makeup I feel like we're like oh god what's wrong with you <laughs> oh I have a friend who like if she wants to pull a sickie she'll stop wearing makeup like two days before oh yeah <laughs> and I'm like oh you haven't been well and she's like haha you fools <laughs> I have not been wearing makeup in quiet brackets um yeah I think that's the the really interesting uh question about who is it for but mm. the I think I have definitely met lots of people that are like it's dust for me I do it because I love it the process is like just gives me it's like therapy and I love that and I, I love anything that makes you as an individual feel better as long as it is for you it's not I feel yeah. better because I don't think people are judging me it's I feel better because it is genuinely for me yeah and I think the really interesting uh, the first part of the question that you posed, which is how does it impact how you feel about you? Mm, I can genuinely yeah. say as somebody that does not wear makeup every now and again, like we sat at the table on this weekend and had lipstick on and I said, I'm not wearing yeah. any lipstick. And everyone was like, what? Because they're just used to seeing this yeah. is just how my face looks. But when I do do makeup, if I've got, I don't know, like a date or something like that, I feel so special like, I feel like I've put in the time. I feel ready. If I've got my face done, I'm probably more particular about what I'm putting on. Because yeah. I, want, I want it to sort of match the effort level um, because it's so different. And I would say you've probably, you know, I've got very long hair. If I go out, out, I will curl it so that it's curled. And I love to, like, make sure that the extra grey is pinned so it's, like, really bright. And I feel sassy. And I feel <laughs> totally ready because I think you're always a little bit sassy. Yes, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Just a smidge. Just I'm sassy. Um, when you feel sassy, you're extra sassy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is true. I think this is true. <laughs> um, but I think it genuinely does change the way I feel. But I like that to be mm. and a special one by exception. Um, but yeah, it's it's like you say. There's so much to dig into any other yeah yeah I th- by exception is definitely a good mantra to have I think it's it's where you get to the point of if you don't have that shield on and then you don't feel confident I think that's when it's um a negative thing isn't it if you feel like you've got to have all your your hair and makeup done and your best outfit on and feel like um you're the best version of yourself physically and that's the only way that you can bring your most confident self to work or or just to day-to-day life then that is that's different isn't it and that's where it's it's a bit of a yeah drawback I this is really interesting um if you were to do a presentation with zero makeup like in front of a lot of people would the makeup and how you dress make you feel better and more confident about what you're delivering like yeah definitely or even it it might be the opposite actually I think if I didn't have it I would be like the confidence would be much less really I think I'm so used to kind of presenting that version of myself anyway that to take it away I would immediately feel kind of on edge yeah exactly I wouldn't feel kind of used to my own physical version of myself so Mm. yeah um but I don't quite know how you get away from that what about you, Elisa? Would you feel like more ready? Um, I used to, and I suppose to Elise's question of how do you move away from that, mm. having done it, mm. I would say it's very gradual. Like it's not, I'm just going to go bare face tomorrow. Like I really paired back step by step. I went from heavy foundation to BB cream to none. I went from, you know, full eye to 
just the brows and the lashes like and it was over a period of time mm. so that then it, I kind of had it in my own head that like oh people won't really notice and by and large people don't fucking notice because they're oh, yeah, too wrapped up yeah, in their own shit. yeah but um yeah. it that that's how I did it and it's and it's almost that thing of getting used to how my own face looks yeah yeah and and it is that now definitely part of it was when I kind of went from shoulder length hair to the buzz cut and embraced the gray and all of that jazz was all part of it as well um without sounding like it was a shedding of whatever but it <laughs> kind of was and I've definitely now leaned into this more androgynous style of of even dress but like it's yeah it's it's a process I think which that you is have so to... interesting the way you describe that because that does make it sound like an addiction in that you have to kind of wean yourself off it basically yeah um yeah. Well, it's just that thing of like I would have friends who would say they couldn't, they can't leave the house without makeup on. Like they fit, they cannot do it. They're like, I won't even go to the shop for a bottle of milk without makeup. And I'm like, I just can't fucking live my life like that. Mm. Like there's, I just, and I suppose it's that thing of that shift of where do I want to be focused? What do I want to be focused on? Yeah. What do I want people to remember me for? Other yeah. than my and smashy dress sense I won't let that go but like you know <laughs> yeah me. she looked great she was talking shit but <laughs> she was talking shit but that coat was unreal <laughs> I I I really interestingly I find it it makes me feel 10 times worse if I have makeup on and I'm dressed to the nines while presenting really like 100 that's, that, that's so good that means you're in your comfort zone when you're just the most real version of you which is exactly I think where we it would be good for everyone to be I I, I feel like it's <clears throat> there's a lot to think about now this is really interesting right because I um I gesticulate a lot you know I'll touch my face a lot I'll do this with my hair loads and genuinely, I think if I ever, ever went anywhere to present and I was wearing makeup, <laughs> 100%, it would be here. It would be because I'm just not used to it being on my face. So I can touch it. Yeah. It would be a nightmare immediately. So it's just too much to think about. As long as my hair is down, not up, but I don't really like it being up. But it's just, I feel way more comfortable when my hair is proper down, but it's just a bit of a mish to do. Um, but yeah, I much prefer just like low maintenance on everything and then just well, being present. I think like you have to get used to, because there's a lot of stuff at the moment about like body positivity and just loving yourself and loving the way that you are. And I like, I personally, I don't always think that's a good thing to be like, to feel like you've got to wake up and love yourself every day. I feel like it's I don't know who does feel like that really I envy the people that do but like it feels more healthy to be in a space where you are like ah, I mean yeah I don't I think it's I think it's just become this this another unachievable goal body positivity is like yeah. well, fuck it if I could just be neutral if I could be body neutral that'd be yeah. fine thanks <laughs> if I could not have to think about it Yes, I genuinely, my my brain says that whole thing about, well, you know, wake up every day. There's all that stuff wasn't there a little while ago, five years ago. Wake up every day, stand in front of the mirror naked, look at yourself and yeah. smile and say you're going to have a great day. I'm just like, I would, I, I would like to be getting to a point where we can all wake up unconscious of our body. The, the point is, it shouldn't matter. The mm. point is, if you are a good person... I don't want to wake up and the first thing I think is, am I overweight? Am I underweight? Am I going to wear makeup? I don't want to feel or think about how I look as a first thing. Yeah. The first thing I want to consider is, you know, how am I feeling? Am yeah. I in a good space? What's the morning going to be like? Is M okay? That sort of stuff. My first feeling, I want it to be to the inside of me, not the outside of me. Yeah. Yeah, like the most important thing about your body is that it carries your brain. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, and that's not to say, and so being, could we always say that we will be unedited, super honest. So it's one of the things we really push ourselves on, on this podcast. Mm -hmm. And that is through the pandemic, I think I probably most people put on weight. So 100% when I get dressed up to go out, it does affect how I see myself and my internal perception of me because 
that's not in my mind's eye how I see myself. I see myself as pre-pandemic uh, crystal and I definitely wasn't that size and I definitely wasn't that shape. So that's a lot to get your head around. So I think it does affect how I feel about me and how I perceive me or, and I loved your brackets on that question, how I think other people perceive me. In my head, people look at the size of me first because obviously the first thing they're going to do is see me before they hear me most of the time. Depends if we're in the pub, might hear me first. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But that's my automatic assumption is that that's what people will notice first and focus on first and probably make a judgment about first. Yeah, I do think... For me, my assumption is it affects everybody else's uh, perception of me. Whether that's, I don't know what I think they think, but I do think they that's the first thing that they will consider and digest. Mm. But if that's valid. Oh, but, it's all valid. Yeah. But it's, it's true, right? When we, look at, when we look around, we're observing the people around us and we know, what do we know? All the things that we've just talked about, age, hair up hair down how they're dressed what they're wearing is it lots of jewelry yeah I guess it's it's usually it's a sort of fleeting thought isn't it and then you sort of you get back to your own thing don't you yeah um but yeah where's it taking you in your mind Ellie I can see you digesting it um well like I'm not an expert on this at all but I think there is some like research out there that says that and I'm sure this isn't the case for everyone but people that are deemed to be like more attractive in speech marks are judged more positively in other ways as well so they're they're sort of seen to be more outgoing Mm -hmm. like um socially competent like intelligent healthy people um and are treated preferentially as a result of that. I guess that's that's kind of what you see in the workplace a little bit. Like there is um there's definitely um studies out there about like sizeism in the workplace, for example, and that kind of thing. So I think there's definitely some judgment going on, I think. Yeah. Whether we like it or not, basically. Yep. Um and it's I guess it's just then how you let that impact on you and your own kind of psyche because you can't stop the fact that like if they're judging you or not you can't do anything about it but um I guess the trick is to not let that impact then the way that you act and your own kind of confidence and your own yeah confidence in your own abilities as well yeah definitely yeah there's um yeah, I can't remember which study I had read, but similar ones about this, like, it's basically an anti-fat bias. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is rife in workplaces. It is rife in medicine. Like, the amount of yes. people in bigger bodies getting misdiagnosed or not getting access to the health care they need because they're just all, all lose weight. It's like, oh, it was actually cancer, but okay. So, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and again, speaking from a place of, like, I've always moved through the world in a slim body um Mm -hmm. I suppose what is now in the woke terms called like size privilege like you know I can go into any shop and buy something off the rack no problem yeah there are so many people who can't and there is biases against them and you know people go oh if somebody's in a bigger body maybe they're a bit lazy and it's just like you can't fucking tell anything (laughs) about a person by what they look like yeah like you just can't you can't tell somebody's health You can't, like, this thing of, oh, they might be unhealthy. It's like, what? What? You can't tell how healthy somebody is by looking at them. I actually had this argument with someone two weeks ago in a pub. I nearly fucking screamed the head off him. If you're listening, (laughs) you know what I was on about. I can imagine it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm almost there (laughs) immediately. (laughs) Yeah, I think that it's a really interesting thing. And to move away from the... um, well no we're not really focusing on female we're talking we're talking about bodies in general somebody made a comment to me the other day that really sat with me I had to really process it they were talking about going to a well-being conference and the key mm. speaker at the well-being conference was a really stocky big guy yeah and they had a bit of an allergic reaction to getting well-being guidance from somebody that was big um 
And really interestingly, hearing that and knowing that I am not the average size um, in the UK, you suddenly start to think, ah, that's interesting. So even advice giving, that's great advice. The content's solid and you know it's solid. It's reputable. It's still judged or there is a barrier to accepting that. Yeah. Confident advice because it's coming from somebody that's not um, a typical size or like, you know, a, a, a typical BMI. And I think and I, do, I think you're right. And you are making those kind of judgments all the time. I think another example is, I don't know if you guys had this, but we had a lot of instances where you were speaking to people over Zoom or Teams and you could still see them like this proportion of them. Yeah. And then you would meet them in person. And like the classic thing is like, oh, you're a lot shorter or taller than I expect. Um, yeah. And like, it doesn't really matter but it is weird there's this weird like jarring like oh that's not what I expected sort of reaction because so yeah. there must be something where you're forming this like physical representation of a person that you're speaking to like I, I guess the same if you were speaking to them on the phone as well and then you finally meet them in person but I always find that really interesting as well that you've sort of you've made up this like caricature of a person um before Based you've even and yeah 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 it's interesting I think you said earlier about you know maybe it doesn't matter if if you're not responding to it and it's changing the way that you'll act or how much you believe in you yeah and I think one of the things is I just just through the conversation that we've had now I know there are these unconscious biases that that creep in and would be, let's say, when I walk into a room. But really interestingly, I don't care about them either. I'm so happy with the content of my work. If I'm anywhere, I only ever tend to step into a space or do a thing that I know that I'm going to be give good content or participate yeah. in a good way. And I've definitely been in rooms where I've seen the initial perception slide over their face of like, okay. And then you get into the great the conversation and you can suddenly see them let go of it. Whatever they're so true, on, isn't it? I think you get that goes. with um any sort of speaker as well. Like, and I've seen it where you get a really kind of glamorous person come up to the podium and then they start speaking and they're a terrible speaker and they just lose all kind of credibility with the audience. So um and that I guess, yeah, that just shows that you might make this initial kind of judgment about somebody based on their looks, but um that just goes as soon as you get drawn into actually what what they're talking about or what who they really are yeah um yeah I think well maybe that's a positive to come so the com the the kind of conversation is <laughs> it's it, got to it, be some positives here <laughs> there's, 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 there, yeah loads of people of my work do mock me about the the fact I'll always find a positive but I think if we're saying that there's absolutely unconscious bias and people will yeah. be absolutely judged by their body also, every environment that I've ever been in, I've never seen anyone hang on to it. If you are really good at what you're doing or you're a good person, I think one of the positives is by you just being you and not playing up to that or not trying to devastate yourself by doing something that really doesn't fit with who you are. Turn yeah. up, do the good work, be you, and it falls away. People forget about it pretty quickly, I think. Um, so... Yeah, I, th I think that's one positive, which is I've never been in a room where someone's looking at me the same at the end that they are at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so, and not to say that I won't, it's not going to be addressed or any of that sort of stuff, but I'm not going to change the my how I deliver or what I'm doing or who I am based on other people's unconscious or conscious perception of me. I just, I just <laughs> yeah. don't. Yeah, I can't imagine you would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start dyeing my hair because someone's like, oh, grey. Like, yeah, love it. Yeah. I think it's an absolute privilege to get older. I think it's the best thing in the world. Some people don't make it to here. What amazing, how amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And have you, um, I guess with M getting older as well, do you notice now, how old is she now? She's nearly eight. I mean, I guess she's still a bit young for coming into the age, but have you noticed her being a bit more conscious of her looks and and that side yet? Or... So I, I've done, I've made a really concerted effort that we don't talk, we talk about being healthy and that's yeah. it. We don't talk about anything else. 
Um, and we always talk about different types of beauty. So I think she's got a beautiful mind, a beautiful brain. And I think she is beautiful. Um, and we talk about, we used to do this sort of mantra thing, which was, you know, what's more important. And we would list things and it was like being kind or being pretty, like, which one would you take? Well, being kind, mummy, you know, we would do these things because I always wanted to understand the content of her character mm. is the most important thing. So she's completely oblivious, not, not a clue, um, yeah. which is, I know it will come. But I, th- I feel like my job is setting a the tone right for sure. Yeah, to give her so much belief in the content of her character. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks about the aesthetics of her, even though she's going to literally be ridiculous, uh, is in blue oh. eyes, dark hair. Yeah, and yeah, and like she's like climbing <laughs> river. <laughs> yeah, she's going to be a model, but still. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like that's just trying to separate that narrative because it's it's so damaging to grow up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and well, they that's say the that- thing. It's re- like, oh, it's so it. important what you hear mm. in the home. Like, yes. I remember my mother talking constantly about losing weight. Mm. It was a constant, like, it was just always there of lose weight, lose weight. I was, go out now, go walking. All the Irish mammies, out walking now, we'll go do the walk. But it's just like, <laughs> okay, like, calm down. But it was constant, constant dieting, constant talk about weight loss. And, like, dieting in general like not to get into the whole why the diet industry is fucked and taking all your money is because hey <laughs> oh yeah that's another podcast don't work. <laughs> that's another podcast to not work. yeah um but this is like they're designed to not work they're designed so that you fail you and you back. end up back at the start um yeah. it's, there's mad statistic like 80 percent of people or something end up gaining back the weight and more and it's this mm. yo-yo dieting but like to grow up with it and listen to it all the time yeah and i do think now even from hearing like my sister talking about would say the books that she reads to her girls and stuff. Mm. Um, they're very much more centered around like being brave, being smart, being yeah. able to run fast, being able to yeah. do whatever. It's that, but it's such a concerted effort. Yeah. And it needs to be because there's still such a strong focus on it on the outside. Yeah. That, like, yeah, you're, you're so really right. That I mean, you've just mentioned the, the diet industry there, but it's the whole, it's everything. It's not just the diet industry, is it? It's just like beauty. Yeah. Like every day you get like, you know, adverts that are saying like, yeah, you need to lose weight or you need to, yeah. you need to be more tanned or you need to whiten your teeth or you need to, do whatever it is you're not good enough type of lip gloss like if you buy this yeah. mascara you will look yeah yeah you and it used transform to be, yourself and it used to be really like really just focused on women and it is still more so but mm. now it's all the lads are getting pulled into this now as well it's all the gym bunnies all that you like you've lads going you hear about like guys in their 20s going to turkey for hair transplants all this kind of stuff it's like oh dude just shave it and be done with it but like it's this pressure yeah. for them as well now for all the younger crowd coming up is is bananas yeah. that definitely i think the lads of, of our generation didn't have so yeah what? sorry what? that's not positive spin it back around there Crystal. No, yeah. well, so what, what i'm doing that, say is, <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking about um it's really natural to go into weight it's really natural to go into makeup and mm. um, things like that but i'm really interested in how you guys think about age and yeah. how age oh yeah people's perception of you <laughs> at least it's a oh. scratching uh, ready and I think this was a really interesting thing when you wrote that as part of your you know uh IE topics to cover yes. with looks and I think I pull it, this on camera oh. yes yeah. of course all right yes um all friendly part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, I got my first intro into age changing the perception of you um, when I was given some feedback on a CV. So in my, I started doing qualifications as I started working. So naturally I was building up qualifications and experience. So at a young age, I had qualifications and experience. So I had a good CV, but I always used to put my date of birth on my CV and I didn't get right. And I didn't get, ever like not a call not a oh. word, not a thing and it was just desert and I gave my CV to a manager and I don't even know who it was and he said oh I know what the problem is and I thought oh it's like format it was so obvious it was immediate when he looked at it so you have to take your age off 
I was like, what are you want about? He said, just trust me. You don't need to, everything else is fine. Just take the age off. And I can't tell you how I, I can believe it. Yeah. It was. And I had um, not just a job in safety that was a step up, but in a completely different industry even. And I was just like, how, how is it that important? H- how? But it literally prevented not even doors from opening, but for people to even look through the letterbox at my name. <laughs> like, nope, yeah. okay, fine. That's gone. So, yeah, any thoughts on how age changes the perception of you? Because, well, like, also, what is the fucking right age? Yes. When is it? Because yeah. I'm still like, I feel like we've got about a three month window and then. I think yeah. that's it. Because, you know, when you go, there's definitely ones you'd be like, mm, yeah, they're a bit age, you know, they're a bit, they're kicking on a bit. <laughs> But then you know, when yourself, you're like, am I old enough yet to be taken seriously? When is that? When can I feel that like this isn't a problem anymore? Yeah. I'm probably there now, but like, I don't know. Am I? Because then I look up to other people in the industry who are probably like that 40s, mid 40s. Is it mid 40s? Is that what we have to get to before we go? It's grand now for two years and then it's down after that. <laughs> I, I remember being excited to get to 30. Now, Me uh, too. People know this. Right. I remember you saying it actually when but, at your thirtieth birthday party, and I felt exactly the same when I got to thirty because I thought I finally people now. take. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The minute you start anything with twenty something, and it doesn't matter that at twenty eight I had a decade of experience and all the qualifications, it didn't matter because it began with a two. The minute you hit the three, and you can just say thirties, just something switches, mm. doesn't it? No. Yes. <laughs> Not for, for me, when I hear other people, I'm like, and other, like, there's certain people like, oh, yeah, they're smashing. And then I'll hear that they're like 33, 34. I'm like, oh, they're the same age as me. I'm like, oh, right. And then I'm like, oh, so I'm, I'm in the okay bracket now too, but I still feel like I'm younger. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, though. I don't think it ever completely goes away. Um, or, yeah, maybe it does when you get to the sweet 45 zone mm-hmm. and then before you yeah. get told you, you passed but, like, it. But, the, the four oh, seconds at 45 where you're like, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then you do get like, you know, when you get CVs coming in or, and, and you see ages on them or dates of birth and they are somebody in their like 50s, later 50s, whatever, it does get to the point where you go, oh, are they still in touch with stuff? Are they still, are they, you know, keeping up with the latest new thing, whatever? There is that kind of go, oh, do I want somebody a bit more young and snappy? Like, well, I yeah, I mean, and, and when you're younger like as well, like as a as a woman, and I I think this has gone away a lot now, but I'm sure it still exists in some industries. There's there, you're in your thirties, are you going to have children? So yeah, like, um, yeah, yeah. So you get I'm to the sure. legitimate age, and then it's like, oh, but you probably have kids, so fuck off. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. I do remember in my sort of early twenties. That's still being a question that was genuinely asked. Mm. Um, And you think, well, you think I'm, you know, I'm nearly 40. So that was a fair while ago. Um, And genuinely being like, so, you know, family plans, like what? And it was always posed in a sort of sweet way, but you, you knew it wasn't. They sort of, are we going to replace you in yeah. such a time with Yeah, position to small talk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Position to small talk. talk. Well, it was absolute judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah I think it's it's been very very nice to see that move out of any of mm. the social conversations around roles and I think that's just I think fear, they, but... they still happen like this thing yeah. like it was asked I was asked it last year about somebody who was interviewing like so it was like interview great interview blah blah, blah close the doors so do you think she's going to head off now and she'd be that and you're like come on yeah, now um, wow so yeah, it's just not as blatant, but it's absolutely still there. Still going on. Yeah. Maybe it's because you move out of that bracket. Like I'm going and you sort of forget about it and think, oh, that's probably gone. Yeah, but it's no, probably it's, it's... because of uh, <laughs> the silver. <laughs> She's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to small Turk her anymore. That feels <laughs> oh, the ship has sailed. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. It's also so unfair as well because like even if you do want to have children you might still want to be a career focused person and like that is just human nature that you need to be the one that carries the child and it doesn't and actually predict after it at least for the after. you know yeah short period after they're born that's it's frustrating um yeah 
Amazing. I, I tell you what, I would love to ask, and it's because there's an example on my mind. So we've covered body, makeup, age. <laughs> Pregnancy <Ooh>. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Clothes. Yeah. And I I find this really interesting because I've always sort of want, worn the standard like black trousers or jeans, nice sort of office top, whatever, and tend to wear the same thing going out, actually, some boots, and then that's fine. Um but there was at my last workplace somebody at board level who would come in in like busted trainers, like a shirt that was stained and it was like all over the place. And he would come in looking like he'd had, you know, run a marathon, jump through a head, done a tough mudder, then come to work. Mm. And he used to genuinely wander around, so, but so comfortable in himself, like totally cool with him. And clearly the business were like he is exceptional at what he does so just however he comes is good but genuinely everybody else was like he he my internal thought was he must be really good like if that's, <laughs> if that's okay he must be really good what what are your thoughts on dress and clothes and all that sort of stuff my first one is a woman would not get away with that in yeah. the yeah. fucking world yes not acceptable. Wouldn't get away with it. Yeah. There is no way. Wouldn't happen. I agree. <laughs> I definitely think that like, I suppose, corporate dress and what's acceptable now and what isn't acceptable has definitely changed. Mm. Especially since COVID, but definitely the white trainers revolution, You're which like I am fucking here for. Like I'm presenting tomorrow and my outfit is chinos and trainers. <laughs> They're not busted. They are very clean. But... It's um so like that shift has changed in that kind of more casual look. Yep. Um, which is great. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see you assimilating a thought there early as well. What what are your thoughts? I don't know. It's a really tricky one. I feel like there should be a level of professionalism to yep. the workplace. I don't mean that you need to come in in like smart dress or like anything like that, but just to I don't know bring your professional self to work like yeah. is that a bad thing to just at least have clean shoes I mean they can be trainers that's fine but um I yeah agree. I, I agree that there I would like not... to, to me just coming in if you were like that with dirty trainers and like a I can't remember what else she said yeah like crunched up t-shirt and stains and yeah, it's a bit like it's. It seems like you can't be bothered. That would be what I would think. It yeah. would be like a, I'm too good to be here. So, well, what you said basically, they must be really good because. Um, how is that even acceptable? Yeah, how are they getting away with it? Basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the same time, it's it is nice that we're getting away from the you know like women have to be in heels like it's only recently that in fact I think some airlines still do it say that women have to wear heels on like the cabin crew have to wear mm. heels to work which is just nuts isn't it like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> why was that ever a rule I think that well there was a whole thing on the red carpet wasn't there if it was at the Oscars or something that there's a minimum heel height or something on one of the red carpets I'm <laughs> sorry what it, yeah heels could be at its own podcast as well like I mean <laughs> I, I I do love heels personally but it is weird that heels are like they cause you pain right like yes. why why have yeah. they developed as a thing for women to wear yeah, there is no equivalent for men. <laughs> and actually, but it wasn't it like in Victorian or t times or something. It used to be the men that wore the heels. It was the start. It was to add height to them. So like heels were actually designed originally for men. Yeah. And right. somehow we ended up. Turned, with they are so very pretty. Turned into a torture yes. device. Yeah. And a I love, torture device. Love them. I don't wear oh, heels. But... Circling back, yeah, if they make you feel good. That's the main point, isn't it? But um. Yeah. Yeah. Super interesting, I think. And I think, um, yeah, it's probably one of those moments where I'm okay with none of this and none of this. The thing that makes me feel good and ready for work is, and I think it's that whole bringing your professional self, is my mm. professional self isn't my skin. It isn't makeup. It isn't my hair. It isn't my jewelry. Actually, my professional self is fairly neutral dress, but professional and just turning up and doing a great job. Um, yeah. And so that would be, 
yeah well, that... you were gonna say heels then that's the <laughs> that was the conclusion of <laughs> absolutely never heels at work yeah. <laughs> but yeah so i think i think uh interesting just those four things body makeup age and clothes were a massive impact on how people perceive us the rules but also how we perceive ourselves yeah it does genuinely alter either way confidence levels you know if you're not in your comfortable state yeah whatever that might be so yeah On this podcast, what we try and do is try and give some sort of summary, but also somewhere to go. So Mm. the the summary of this may feel almost negative, which is what we've concluded is there's unconscious bias, there's conscious bias, there is standards that are really difficult to meet that we are um, that we are judged by. But I think if we were going to move forward and for any listeners one of the really, although it's been a tone under everything we've said, we've we've been really consistent in it's whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. And actually, if you're getting ready in the morning and you feel press ganged into doing what you're doing, press ganged into the hair, press ganged into the makeup, then even if it's gently, like Elisa, and you're like, actually, how do I scale back to comfortable? How do I scale back to me and where I want to be? Even if you have to do that really gently... 100% it does not affect the content of your car- the caliber the content of your character or the caliber of your ability mm-hmm. so I think maybe it's just a getting comfy is okay whatever that looks like mm. and even if you have to get there gradually off the back of this podcast you think actually no I feel like I need to de-skin and I need to get to me gently is fine also like random overnight take it all off and sod the world is completely fine also which I feel like would be one of like Elisa's approach would be just like burn it (laughs) just burn it all just burn burn it all all. yeah yeah. I liked the body neutrality thing you said earlier I feel like that's a good um that's a good message like you shouldn't have to feel like you love yourself all the time but just to get to a point of it's just a body and it doesn't really matter there's so much more I think that's that's like yeah. when you That's think about it, <laughs> like when you think about it, what we look like is the least interesting thing about us. Yeah, for sure. That's it. Um, and I suppose one other thing I would say is that if you are someone who's on social media a lot, curate your fucking feed. Start following people that look like you, not the Molly Mays or the fucking whoever. Right? Or because look like you want to get to right yeah if it's like less if it's fucking realistic sorry like but you know there's we can be following all the supermodels and all the rest and we will never look like them but if you follow people who look like you your size your body type yeah see how they style themselves see how and Mm. like accounts that there are some fabulous like plus size accounts all that stuff that are fashion forward like they're class influencers and their content is fucking solid because they are talking about you know, I might be a size 20, but I just did an unbelievable yoga session or I did a bar class or whatever, yeah. because it doesn't matter what size I am, I'm able to move. And so therefore I feel good in myself. So it's just, it's being conscious of what we're consuming because yeah. you know what, the fucking messages are going to get through anyway. So try and be kinder to yourself and feed yourself yeah. something a bit Click nicer. Not interested button if it's yeah. in any way toxic or unfollow. If it makes you feel bad about yourself, just unfollow. Yeah for sure yeah amazing well thank you so much ellie it's been wonderful to have you on and you're in, oh. in a couple of weeks as well to talk yeah. about yeah oh it's been lovely this is a real fangirl moment because I, I love you guys love listening <laughs> to the pod so <laughs> amazing <laughs> yeah well, i can't wait for the next one fabulous well we absolutely um yeah love you too it's lovely that elisa's now actually met you in person well before we did this yeah yeah i gotta go take all my makeup up now off now and uh tomorrow walk in <laughs> whatever feels right man whatever feels yeah. right <laughs> oh, well thank you so much and um it's been an absolute pleasure having you on speak all Bye, right everyone. thanks for listening cheers, cheers guys Bye.